I, I think to add another perspective to um, to what's going to happen with forced migration because of climate change, I, I think another important thing to keep in mind is that that potentially puts indigenous peoples and people all around the world actually at, in a place where potentially culture will be lost and and language and all of these things that I've shared with you guys about ways that we can protect biodiversity, like that this is how these knowledges are lost um, is through forced migration. And so I, I also wanted to highlight that and as well go back to um, what Dr. Foster was saying about um, this idea of like land first and prioritizing land. And we have a, a, it's not even a saying, it's more of like a way of life in Hawaii and it's aloha aina. It literally translates to a love for the land. But it's actually more of something that I think most Hawaiians are actually born with. Um, and it's like this responsibility to care and live with land. And, and I think, I, I didn't explain this earlier, but this is why I chose to study environmental science and public policy here, because I, I definitely more of a humanities girl myself, but um, chose this because this is part of my responsibility because I'm so privileged to be Hawaiian. I, I was born with this responsibility to care for and advocate for my ocean and land and water relatives. And so I, I just wanted to bring that like piece of knowledge we have in my culture to this conversation too. I think all that she said is exactly why we need to think of the whole earth. We do not think about setting aside nature and then having a place for people. People have to be intertwined with that nature in a variety of different ways and in a variety of different intensities. And it is only by doing that well that we're going to be able to conserve that much nature and develop rich relationships with it. 